Middle Earth, a land of great beauty and greater conflict. From small folk to ancient kingdoms, Middle Earth is the breeding ground for fantastical adventures and larger than life characters. This is the story of Middle Earth. The Dark Lord Sauron sought power and dominion over Middle Earth. He forged rings of power that were under his control, and nine of these he gave to leaders of men. The chief among the nine was the Witch King, who ruled the dread kingdom of Angmar. No one knows who the Witch King was before he became a servant to Sauron. Some say that he was one of three Black Numenorean lords to receive Sauron's rings, while others say he was a king of the Easterlings. There are also those who believe that he was already a sorcerer, and the scourge of the North Kingdom, with armies that rivaled those of the Haradrim. While it was unknown who he was before he obtained his ring, that ring enabled him to gain even more power and wealth. However, his power eventually consumed him until he became the leader of the Nine. As the leader of Sauron's armies in the North, it was the Witch King who laid siege to Imladris in the Second Age, an assault that was ended by Gilgalad. After Sauron's defeat in the War of the Last Alliance, the Nazgul vanished from Middle-earth. However, in the Third Age, there were rumors of a dark power growing in the north and a mysterious sorcerer who ruled over that land. That land was named Angmar, Iron Home, and it stretched from the northernmost crescent of the Misty Mountains east to Mount Gundabad. The Witch King set his throne in the dark citadel of Karn Doom on the western edge of Angmar, and it became his strongest fortress. The king gathered his armies of orcs, evil men, and other unspeakable creatures bent on one goal, the destruction of Arnor. From there, the witch king led his attacks on Arnor, which was already divided into three separate kingdoms by internal strife. Instead of engaging in open attack, the witch king used his infiltrators to widen the rifts between the three kingdoms of Arnor. Rudar was the first to succumb, for its kingdom was the smallest and their hillmen kings were easily manipulated. Once Rudar was completely in Angmar's sway, it was invaded and captured by Angmarim forces. Those still loyal to the House of Elendil were hunted down by sorcerers. Angmar then attacked Cardolan, the Second Kingdom. Resistance forces held the Tower of Amansul, but not for long. The tower fell, and King Arvaleg was slain. The survivors fled with two Palantiri to Fornost. The Witch King pursued and drove his forces towards the last kingdom, Arthedain, but he was repelled by their young king, Arafor. With the aid of Círdan the shipwright and the forces of Linden, Arafor repelled the Angmarim and drove them from Fornost. The Witch King returned to Karn Doom to brood and rebuild his armies. The Witch King sent his forces to Fornost once again, intent on conquering Arthedain and capturing the Palantiri. King Arvedui sent to Gondor for help, and the Gondorian prince Aarnor joined forces with Círdan in an alliance of men, elves, and hobbits in an attempt to save Arnor. They came too late. Arnor had fallen. Angmar had captured the capital, and the Witch King had taken the throne in Fornost. King Arvedui fled north, only to perish in the ice bay of Forakel, and the two Palantiri were lost with him. Had the Witch King simply ignored the forces of Gondor and Linden, it would have been the end of Arnor for all time. But in his hubris, the Witch King sent forces to attack Aarnor. The Great Battle of Fornost was waged on the fields of Nenuiel. Caught between the marching armies and the horsemen of Aarnor, the Witch King was beaten back, and he fled to Karn Doom with Aarnor's horsemen hard on his heels. The armies of Gondor and Linden were joined by those of Rivendell, led by Glorfindel, and together they raised Karn Doom and annihilated Angmar's armies. The Witch King hid from the battle until the very end when he finally met his foes. Aarnor's horse took fright and bolted, but as the Witch King mocked him, Glorfindel rode up to challenge the evil king. The king was so afraid of Glorfindel that he vanished into the shadows and escaped to Mordor. Aarnor, more bold than wise, wanted to ride in pursuit, but he was stayed by Glorfindel who said prophetically, He will not return to this land. Far off yet is his doom, and not by the hand of man will he fall. Angmar, the Iron Home, fell. After the orcs and evil men were permanently driven out, the region was settled by the Eotheot, ancestors of the Rohirrim, and the land was cleansed.
we now leave the dark lands of Angmar to travel to Amansul in the Weather Hills, a strategic site in the history of Middle-earth.